What up, player, profiler, faithful, to many key will welcome to the latest episode of The Game Plan. Y'all smell that? Smells like some championships will be decided here in the next few days. This is championship week, so obviously we had to go all out here on The Game Plan and bring in not one, but two aces no pocket aces today. So we're gonna we're gonna do some week 17 prep. We get the five biggest questions of the week to be answered. We're gonna go bargain bin hunting. So why don't we just jump right on into it? So I got two very special guests here today. The first, you know him from the Dynasty Roundtable, amongst other things here at Player Profile. I'm talking about my man, Seth Iwald. Sethi, what up, my friend? What's going on, Matty? I mean, it's been a while since I've been on the game plan. Excited to be back. Help some people win some championships this week. Ooh, and then we have another special guest. You know him. You love him. Used to be here at Player Profile. Now you know him over at Roster Watch. He is one of the other members of the fantasy football executives. My man, Cody Carpentier. What up, brother? What's going on, brothers? How we doing? Oh, we, we got to go big today. This is championship week. Uh, Money is on the line. Rings are on the line. We got to get it popping. So let's do it. Let's get the damn thing rolling. Let's get the ball going here. We got the five biggest questions for week 17 to be answered for everyone in the chat. Uh, we're going to start with the very first one. Seth, give me some must-start players here this weekend. Well, I, I don't know if it's cheating or not, but Michael Pitt, or, or if anybody's like questioning this player at all, they shouldn't be. Michael Pittman's coming off a concussion, and he's, he's going to be ready to roll for championship week. And instead of Michael Pittman, we should probably just call him Mr. Reliable because since week six, <laughs> Pittman has finished no lower – then wide receiver 16 in fantasy points per game. If you don't count the game, he was knocked out in week 15. He's clearly Gardner Minshew's go-to target. And that's that's honestly a game that I could see the Raiders being a little drunk, being a little hungover from beating the Chiefs. The, the Colts get their primary weapon back in Michael Pittman. There's really no wide receiver two there. I mean, Alec Pierce is there along with Josh Downs. And we like Josh Downs. But he still hasn't quite emerged as that second weapon. So it's Mike, it's gonna be the Michael Pittman show. And I think he's gonna have a big, big week against the Raiders. So he's my must start player um in week 17 and a pivotal week 17. The biggest week of the fantasy season. Cody, who's your must start player this week? Uh this is gonna be an oddball one deeper. Um probably a question I could use later um when we're bargain bin hunting, but Josh Oliver. With no TJ Hawkinson, mm. if you've been tapped in over on patreon.com forward slash executives, you know, week one through 16, when I was doing the waiver wire, 
fab guidance and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Every single week, Josh Oliver was at the bottom line, and I called him a five star special. It was him and Trey McBride were five star specials all year, and then all of a sudden, Zach Ertz is gone. Trey McBride goes from a five star special to the top of the food chain. Josh Oliver, he he's shown spurts, he's shown utilization. They like to use him in the play action. No T.J. Hawkinson. They're banged up in the receiver room. Look for Josh Oliver to be the uh, the easy target, the rollout guy for Jaron Hall this week. I think I think you're looking at Josh Oliver as a as a slam dunk top twelve option this week at the tight end position. Where you know over at Roster Watch, we, we all all four of us put our rankings in Trashman, myself, Alex, and we got our projection model. Everyone's coming in in the twenties. The projections coming at twenty eight. Trashman's at twenty two. I got him at tight end eleven this week. Ooh, <clears throat> the tiebreaker here for, for an Oliver, too, because let's face it, there's a lot of Hawkinson teams in the championship. He was even good just last week before he blew out his knee. So uh, a lot of teams are looking to pivot. Uh, I was I flipped Hawkinson for Kelsey in a league where I'm in the championship to try to get that championship win. Uh, again, we are advocates of no trade deadlines in Dynasty. Uh, so, yeah, but if you are in redraft or if you're stuck, there's no trades to be made. Josh Oliver's a good, good pickup. And you get final say. I love having guys in the last game because yep. you never out until the clock hits zero. Somebody that I think uh, is a, really a must play this week, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray comes in this week. As long as he's listed as he's good to go. I know he's been sick all week. They just put Hollywood Brown on IR. Uh, but if, as long as he's just been – if he's dubbed good to go – He's got the dream matchup. He's got the Eagles. They've just given up a ton of points to quarterbacks in fantasy. Uh, everything's kind of aligning here. Uh, and also, they've been bad against quarterbacks or good for fantasy over the course of the season. But in their last three, uh, they've given up the seventh most fantasy points. I think that trend continues even when he's down a weapon. So if you're in a pickle, if you're in a redraft league, I mean, I know there's a few redraft leagues that I'm in where he's a free agent. And you're kind of hard off from not looking. Maybe you were hoping Nick Mullins and that late pivot to Jaron Hall kind of throws you into a bit of a tizzy. Move over to Kyler Murray. Now, Cody, I got to ask you this because you are a Vikings fan. What are their thoughts here? Are they just trying to see what they have before they decide whether it's Kirk Cousins or a new quarterback? Well, I think first of all, it's a very winnable game. Uh, they're favored by two in this one. Uh, it's at home, Sunday night football. And this is very much if they can win this one. They have next week against the Lions, but they can make the playoffs at 8-9. There's a good chance they make the playoffs at 8-9 if they win this football game. Good chance whoever wins it makes the playoffs. But um, no Stokes, no Jair. Jaron Hall is going to get it. Everyone's like, oh, Sunday Night Football against the rival. Eh, it's not that not that big of a deal. Green Bay is not the old Green Bay. Uh, and yeah. You have Jefferson. That's the thing. you got the best player on the football field on your side of the ball. And I think uh, Hall came out, looked good against Atlanta when he did play the, the one drive, marched him all the way down there to like the five yard line before getting knocked out. Um, I actually had that the same question for you guys in the inverse because I'm super high on this week. I have QB, QB 15 just because I, I think that they're going to, they're going to navigate this game in a, in a way that he's going to be able to score 27, 30 points with this offense. And uh, Green Bay's defense sucks. But in, if you're the question you asked was, what are they doing with Jaron Hall? The, the thing is, is you have to figure out what Jaron Hall is before this offseason. With right. Kirk's deal and his situation as what it is, you know what Nick Mullins is now. You knew what Josh Dobbs was. He showed you a little bit. He came back down there. He tried to pull the Geno Smith card. He tried to pull the finish the year hot, get that 30 mil. <clears throat> not the answer. Nick Mullins, not the answer. Is Jaron Hall the answer? If Jaron Hall is the answer over the next two games, if he goes – if he goes 2-0, and wins the Packers game, win against the Lions, goes to the playoffs, looks good, guess what? Jaron Hall's going to be in the QB battle in 2024. If he mm-hmm. doesn't, all three of these cats are probably – well, Mullins and Dobbs are for sure gone. Hall's probably just the third cat in the room. They either bring a guy in or they draft a guy, and then they also probably bring back Kirk Cousins. But you have to – you cannot exit a season. It's malpractice as a team, as, as ownership, as everything, to leave a season and not know what this guy is. Yeah, for sure. I mean, listen, they they're gonna have a decision to make. I think they bring Kirk Cousins back. I, I'm I've gone on record saying, um, I would all but guarantee it. So I, I think he's absolutely uh, back. But here's your decision: Is Darren Hall the backup in the potential future, or is a guy like Spencer Rattler, uh, you know, a guy like Michael Prate, something like something you would grab later in the draft? 
to kind of keep that ball turning. I, so that's what I think. But as far as your ranking of Jaron Hall, top 15, um, I think I got him two spots below that at 17, but the sentiment's there. Green Bay yeah. has been putrid against quarterbacks, especially lately. They've got second most points over the last two. Get donkey, dude. They're not. We're going to answer. We're going to sprinkle some questions here as we go through the, the five main questions. So, Jelly of the Month. What is the Jelly of the Month? Is it strawberries or jam? I don't know. But start Montgomery tonight or wait to see if Jamar Chase plays tomorrow. If he does not play, if he waits on Chase, his pivot is either JSN or Javante. What's your thoughts, Seth? Oh, I think you have to play Jamar Chase. Um, as much as I like David Montgomery, I think your pivots are just fine uh, with Javante Williams or JSN. I actually think Javante Williams, out of all the players in that Denver Chargers puke game that we're going to see in the, the the backup bowl, I think that's a fine play if you, if you need if if that doesn't quite work out. I actually think Jameer Gibbs, as much as it pains me to say, I think Jameer Gibbs is probably going to have the big game and not David Montgomery. I, I we'll get to that later in my bold prediction, but uh, yeah, I think your pivots are just fine. So I would go with Jamar and then pivot if you have to. Cody, Devon A chain or Zamir White? This is a good one. This is a very good one. Um, Zamir showed you what he can be. Uh, our projections came out this week with Zamir at running back nine. But the thing for me is. I love A chain. I love the upside that A chain brings you. You know, if A chain goes off or gets 15 plus touches, you're going to be sitting pretty. Uh, do we see officially that Jacobs is out? He's doubtful. He's officially doubtful. Say, okay. He I didn't know if I saw it. The NPO week. He's not going to play. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ride with Zamir. I, I, we too. like that matchup. And I think you just roll with the guy that's guaranteed. Tough matchup for H in against Baltimore. Speed does kill. Speed can break matchups. Speed can go against that. Um, but I think you just roll with the guy uh, that you know is going to carry that load. They've showed it to you the last couple of opportunities without Josh Jacobs. I'm going with Zamir White. Zamir White, number three running back in the war score. If you know what the war score is, get your ass over to patreon.com forward slash executives and get the war score. You need it for your championships. Uh, before we get into question number two, let's hear from our sponsors of this episode. This episode is brought to you by Rival Fantasy. Rival Fantasy, the coolest fantasy platform not enough people know about, but they will once I'm done, baby, because they're always innovating. They just rolled out seasonal leagues. We set them up for patrons, for our listeners, and they funded over $1,000 in payouts. That's what Rival's all about. They're always innovating. They already had the fantasy book where you can take overs and unders, stack them up, multiply your payout, but then they added challenges so you can set your own lines and put them out there for the community and then you can browse the community's lines and say hey this guy's crazy i'm gonna take the other side it's cool and they have fantasy bingo rival fantasy is reminding me how much fun i can have with fantasy football and use that promo code player the promo code is player they give you a 100 instant deposit match plus 25 dollars plus a free play that promo code is player for up to 125 dollars in deposit bonus and a free play you can't beat it. Matty Kuhn here, the game plan, joined by my boys, Seth and Cody. Let's move on to question number two, talking about the must-start players, but who are the guys that you're avoiding like the plague? So, Cody, who is your must-avoid? You're staying away from this player. I think there's a couple guys that you can really bring up here. Um, but as far as the running back position, I'm going to stay with the, the, the classics. I got a couple of guys. Obviously, don't go back to the well with the Miles Sanders thing. It's pretty clear it's Chuba, Chuba Hubbard in that backfield. I'm staying away from the Charbonnets. I'm staying away from James Connors, another guy I'm staying away. Tough matchup um, against the Philadelphia Eagles this week. I get him as running back 29. Uh, I think another one that's interesting is Najee Harris. Najee Harris and Jalen Warren in that backfield together, staying away from both of these guys in this backfield. Uh, it's just a, it's a bulk of running backs that I just don't love the matchups for. Now, again, I know K Connor has had a couple of good games and maybe got you there, but I'm fading Connor this week. I'm fading Najee this week. Um, Zeke, very tough matchup against Buffalo. If you have something better, I would – I would love to go elsewhere, uh, but I understand everyone wants to see, oh, 85% snaps or 85% uh, rush opportunity. I get it, but it's tough matchups, tough play with a bad team. So a couple of running backs I dislike. Seth, who are you avoiding? 
Yeah, I, there's a few. Cody did a really good job uh, breaking down. Uh, I'm really, I don't know if you're in the championship game, if you have this guy, so it may not matter, but I'm really nervous about B. John Robinson this week. They're playing the Bears and what could be, you never know what the weather's going to be like in Chicago. The Bears are the number one defense against the run. Arthur Smith, we all know who Arthur Smith is. He's the Grinch of fantasy football. Um, <laughs> and just those Atlanta pass catchers in general, too, like I, I'm, I don't, trust Kyle Pitts or you know like uh, Drake London I'd have a really hard time playing them against the Bears defense that's really come on uh but again and, and Brian Robinson looks like he's healthy this week but I I think I would avoid like the the, the Chris Rodriguez is the Brian Robinson's I don't like that matchup at all they're probably going to be in comeback mode in Washington for a good majority of that game which is why like we'll talk about that later as far as a quarterback that I like in that game um but yeah, those are just a couple that I would avoid. The situations would I would avoid. But Cody did a nice job of like a comprehensive, really quick, detailed point of view on um, the the running backs that I would avoid. I would agree with pretty much all of what Cody said too. Let me ask you guys this: Are you playing Devonte Adams in your championship? If somehow you got by, let's say you had Amari Cooper. Last week, he helped propel uh, your team to the championship, even though Devontae had a stinker on Christmas against the Chiefs. Are you going back to the Devontae Adams well against a tough matchup against the Indianapolis Colts? I think I think I would. I think there's a good chance. I mean, that Kansas City game was so strange with the Chiefs, pretty much their offense giving the Raiders more points than the Raiders actually scored. And then you saw the Raiders go into super conservative mode. I mean, I I don't think did Aiden O'Connell attempt the pass in the second half or something like something crazy like that. It was a wild uh, game, yeah. Yeah, so I think this is a completely different game. These are two teams vying for the playoffs. I think it's indoors in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. I think you're gonna have some opportunity for points. So yeah, I, I think I would go back to the uh, Devonte Adams. Well, I think Aiden O'Connell's can get him the ball just fine. But what do you think, Cody? Yeah, I think he's had a couple of good games against the Colts historically. He's played them three times in 2022. 14 targets, 126 yards, touchdown. Before that, 2020, nine, nine targets, 106 yards, touchdown. Eight targets, 41 reception, receiving yards, and one touchdown. So he scored a touchdown in every game he's played against the Colts. And like you said, they're literally vying for a playoff spot. These teams are both – I mean, the Colts technically are, are trying to win their division. They're tied for first with the Jacksonville Jaguars, but the Raiders are still in the ballpark. They can still weasel their way into that wild card spot. So this is what Devontae Adams you know, wanted to play for. This is what he complained. This is why you saw him throwing a little bit of a tantrum earlier this season was he's like, I want to be on a winning team. This is – and now they're a game out of the playoffs. You win against the Colts, you eliminate the Colts from that spot. You take the tiebreaker with them, and you kind of put your way back up, and you make that Week 18 game worth something. So I think Adams is going to go out there, and they're going to say, you know what, it's a tough matchup on paper, but give this guy 16 targets, 15 targets, 14 targets. He's going to score once or twice. He's going to give you a hundo. That's going to help our fantasy teams. Colts also give up. I think it's north of 25 points a game at home. They're a sieve at home, Swiss cheese type of defense at home. So, yeah, I'm going to go back to Devontae Adams as well. Noah is in the chat. Sam Laporta or George Kittle? Oh, wow. that's Those are some good options there. Um, I'd probably go Laporta. I think that's probably going to be more of a back-and-forth shootout, but it's flip a coin really close. And if you're looking for tiebreakers, what's the weather in Washington going to be? I don't know. It's outdoors. I know that much. So that's something to monitor, too. We know that it's going to be indoors. Uh, highest total of the week, too, uh, in that Dallas game. So I like Laporta there. Weather conditions look pretty good in Washington, yeah. but Washington surprisingly stops tight ends. And it's probably because they just can't stop wide receivers. Uh, obviously, the Niners have good wide receivers. I'm going Laporta. What about you, Cody? I want to play both. I want to ask Noah if he's got – you know, flex spot that he can bench, you know, some shit bagger in because both these guys, I have them as 10 and four and five. And yeah. um, I think the San Francisco is going to get right. We've seen San Francisco put 45 on teams like this, especially in a get right spot here. You score 45. Uh, I don't know if my uh, Hayfield Minnesota math does me right, but I think that's like six touchdowns. So six touchdowns, probably a decent chance. George Kittle catches one. And then, of course, Sam Laporta. We everybody, everybody loves Sam Laporta and that offense and the way it's going to go. That's a that's a shootout in the making with a fifty three and a half point total against Dallas. So, I, I like both dudes. My question would be for Noah: Is are you really you? Unless his team's loaded. All right, here's got the question. He says, 
I got Puka, Rashi, Jefferson. With Puka in my flex, also have Pittman on the bench. So he's got, I mean, he's a championship squad right here. That's what we're talking about. So, um, uh, yeah, give me Laporta just because you know what you're going to get out of him. Kittle's got too much, too much volatility. I'll ride with you guys. I'll go with Laporta. Just real quick, we're going to put a pin on the Devontae Adams talk. Adams or, or Rice? I, at this point, I can't believe I'm going to say it, but I go to, I mean, Devontae Adams. I mean, over a Chiefs, the number one wide receiver for the Chiefs. You know, I, I mean, who knows? They could bounce back this week, but I do not like what I'm seeing from the Kansas City Chiefs at all. How do you have if him in your rankings, Cody? If you're projected to lose, I would play Adams because of, you know what Devontae Adams is and is ability to score 35 on a given chance but if you're in a tight game or you're projected to win i'm going rashi rice i actually have rashi seven spots ahead of him this week love it and also remember the championship last week or last year fellas jared stidham in at quarterback against the niners gonna be dog food psych Devonte goes berserker mode and wins some championships so gotta go to Devonte here so now we're gonna move on to question number three give me your favorite matchup that you are breaking ties with, streaming with, what's the matchup that fantasy gamers need to be attacking in the championship set? Well, I don't, I'm probably going to take the low-hanging fruit here, but, I mean, Dallas, Detroit. I mean, this total, this game total, like Cody said, I saw 52.5. It might be up to 53.5 now. Uh, this is because these two teams line up perfectly for a shootout, just digging a little bit deeper. Number one, the game's indoors at Jerry World on that fast track. Number two, Dallas is a below-average run defense. We all know the strength of the Detroit Lions offense is their offensive line, pound the rock, which Mir Gibbs, David Montgomery set up the play action. They're going to be able to do that. Number three, Detroit's defense is bad. They're number 22 overall in yards per play allowed, number 15 in total yards allowed, number 24 in points allowed per game. I think this is a just a smash. It's lining up as just a smash game for C.D. Lamb, Jameer Gibbs, maybe even David Montgomery, and some of the other skill position players um, there. Other games that I like that are maybe a little bit below the radar: Raiders, Colts. I think Raiders are going to be high, drunk off of beating Kansas City. Um, Antonio <laughs> Pierce, like. Twisted, baby. Get those stogies ready. Yeah, like that was that's like a win of of you know a win of all wins there for for that. That was team. a big win. Big, um, big I don't win. know if you remember. Remember John Gruden had them like doing laps around Arrowhead when they beat Kansas City at Kansas City. So that, for that franchise, that beating the Kansas City Chiefs means that much because that never happens. Uh, and and both of these teams, like we mentioned, are fighting for a playoff spot indoors. Michael Pittman is back. That's a huge deal for Gardner Minshew. Um, and and I think this could be a back and forth shoot. I know the total is only 42, 42 and a half, but I, I could see both these teams putting up some points. And as, as much as we talked about a little bit earlier, 49ers commanders too. I think it's going to be a blowout, but I think it's going to be the kind of blowout that's good for fantasy football. I could see, I, I definitely think the 49ers skill players are going to put up points, but the McCaffrey's, Ayuk's, Kittle, Debo. I think all those players could have a good game. But on the flip side, the commanders, I know Jacoby By or Jacoby Brissett is questionable. So you have to monitor that. If he's out, then I don't like this really at all. But if you look at like especially Terry McLaurin with Jacoby Brissett in at quarterback, it's night and day difference. I think Jacoby Brissett is a better quarterback than Sam Howell. And I think the Washington pass catchers are going to benefit from that. And I think Jacoby Brissett, if you're desperate, like I am in a championship league, I, I'm considering playing Jacoby Brissett as one of my options. So I think that this is set up perfectly for garbage time for Washington. I could see them scoring a touchdown or two late uh, to get you over the hump in your fantasy football championship, whether that's McLaurin, whether that's Dotson or Logan Thomas or whoever. I think it the, all those options, if you're desperate, are are okay options. Would I Do I prefer them? No, but if you're desperate... I think it's okay in this matchup. So Seth took eight matchups to go yeah, after. Took, so, took, uh, did if, you just, take, if you take all of them, you got to be <laughs> right about one of them. Right? That's why I'm struggling. I'm sitting here talking because I was like, I know what the running back position. I, I recall Seth's answer after I picked the running backs. He's like, yeah, I like what Cody picked, and I was like, great. I just, I just took all the 
all the pit, all the running backs. So so Seth had nothing to come back with. Then Seth circles the wagons and takes <laughs> every matchup. No one and circles the wagons like so, Seth e. D. <laughs> so I love that Lions Cowboys game. First off, that's a great one. Uh, I think that's the, the on paper that's the chalk best matchup of the week. Um, yeah. I thought you brought up a couple other ones. The Raiders Colts one's very interesting just because of the playoff. Uh, intricacies that are there Rams Giants I think is very interesting because it's a good matchup for the Rams and the Rams have been dominant and I think that's a team that they can press and I think they can score 35 in this game which will in turn I've seen way too many teams wait I've seen way too much Darius Slayton people are picking up Darius Slayton and like utilizing him uh in this matchup and even last week Tiger used him in a game and won um Dolphins Ravens Dolphin, Dolphins, Ravens. Last week we saw the Ravens take on the 49ers, win 33 uh, to 19 against Shanahan. Now he gets McDaniel's in Baltimore. Can they double tap? Can they can they run it back and c- can they slow down this offense that is honestly more potent than that Niners offense? I don't know if they can slow them down quite as much, but that has 35, 30 written all over it. Um, and then honestly, another one that one that Seth didn't bring up that I like quite a bit. And this is no homerism aside because I think both teams are hot garbage, but Packers Vikings, Packers Vikings, Sunday night football, the last game of the week, as Maddie brought up before, I think there's a lot of key pieces that you can utilize in here. And then I know, I know I'm on player profiler uh, network right now. And this is a player that uh, couldn't pronounce player profiler radio network, but Romeo Dobbs, I think is sitting in a good spot this week. <laughs> and I think I, I have him as a top 30 wide receiver. I think that situation is good. A lot of players banged up in that in that receiver room. Jaden Reed should be back in this one. I think Aaron Jones bounced back last week. Ty Chandler's in a good spot. Josh Oliver's in a good spot. Of course, Justin Jefferson. People have been trying to fade Justin Jefferson, feels like, the last two weeks because of the quarterback play, but he's the best receiver in football, point blank, period, hands down, hands up. Jaron Hall's playable. Jordan Love's playable. Like this is a game that, again, as I just talked about with that that uh, the Ravens Dolphins game, it has 35, 28, 35, 30 written all over it. I think this Viking game has uh, 33, 30 written all over it as well. Either direction, yeah. I don't really care. That was gonna be my pick. Uh, they have, uh, I believe, it's the fifth highest over under on the slate. And having final say indoors in a divisional matchup where both teams are trending in the wrong direction defensively, give me let me fire that up. So now let me be, you know hit you with another question, Cody. What's the matchup that you're looking to avoid? I mean, the matchup that I'm looking to avoid is there's a couple of them on here, a couple of putrid ones. Seth likes the Niners Commanders game. I like it because I think the Niners are going to score 45. The commander side of everything scares me. All these receivers have scared me all year in Washington. Whoever you pick, it's not going to be him. If you pick McLaurin this week, if you got him, play him. Curtis Samuel is going to catch two touchdowns, whatever it is. I don't like anybody on the Washington team. I think that Steelers-Seattle game is a complete stay away. I know uh, we have a lot of players coming out of that one. Pickens had a massive game last week. But I tell you what, this is something I told Tiger last week. He advanced to a championship after like Pickens scored 40, Cooper scored 50, Brees Hall scored 45. I said, Tiger, the number one rule when you get to this point of the season is when you see a guy blow their wad in week 16, I said, week 17, you better pull your trousers up and get ready because you're about to take it from the back end. And that's exactly what you did with Cooper. <laughs> Cooper gave you 50, yeah. and then guess what? Cooper turned around and just sat on the bench on, on Thursday night, and it screwed you. It screwed you big time because you're you're banking on that. You're like, I made the championship. I upset the one seed. Bang. And I think that's something you're looking at again with this Steelers Seahawks game. It's tough, tough matchups here for Pickens, tough matchups for Metcalf and JSN, that side of the thing. And then both the running games, I think, will struggle as well. I, I just think this game is this game is going to be putrid. Um, I'll just stick with one game. I'll take one game. <laughs> uh, I am going to pick. I'm trying to stay away from the Chargers Denver in Denver. Mm-hmm. You know, they're making it just has bad vibes all over the place. The Chargers have all but quit. Denver's making a QB change. They're going to let go of Russell Wilson. There's going to be a new QB on this team in 2024. Eckler's been bad. Cortland Sutton's been ruled out. I just don't want anything. I don't want no part of this game. No part at all. So I'm staying away from the matchup in Denver. Seth, you mentioned how nervous you are fantasy-wise about the Falcons-Bears. Is that your avoid, or is there another matchup that you uh, are telling gamers to stay away from? Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous about that. I mean, you're probably, I mean, you're just, uh, I'm assuming you're probably, you probably have to play Bijan, but I would be super nervous about playing Bijan. Uh, I think, you know, DJ Moore even scares me a little bit with, with in that game because the, the Falcons have a pretty good defense. So that, that one I'm really nervous about if you have better options, 
But one one game, I agree with you about Chargers Denver as well. I think that could be a real shit show. Uh, but real shit bomb. But one a game that's in that similar vein, and I want to hear what you guys think about this. All of a sudden, Panthers Jaguars is like, oh oh my god, this could be like a, a Chargers Denver. <laughs> There's no Trevor, no Trevor Lawrence, right? Yeah. CJ Beathard's rolling back into a starting job, which no, sorry, my Iowa faithful CJ Beathard is not him. Sorry. Couldn't go a whole episode without not, Seth bringing yeah. up Iowa. That's right. It, yeah. Mark it off your shit. Like, Mark Weisman, baby. Don't do it. Don't you. Oh, dude. Now, don't now, do they, it. now they have to take a shot and chug a beer if they're playing the drinking game, the game plan <laughs> drinking game. Like, they, you just got like 100 people no. wasted early on a Saturday. Uh, so, but I mean, Bryce, but Bryce Young, like, just had what a career. Like, he put up 20 some fantasy points, but That's that was good. against the Packers defense. That is, you could make a case down the stretch. They've been the worst defense in the NFL. Uh, mm-hmm. So I know the Jags defense isn't great, but trusting anybody in this game, maybe Chuba Hubbard. I think you can play Chuba Hubbard with confidence, but that's about all all the players in this matchup that I'm, I'm not excited about starting Calvin Ridley. I'm not excited about starting Evan Ingram anymore. <laughs> like, I'm just not. Like, so I'm I'm very nervous about that game too. Yeah, that could that could prove to be a, a bit of a crap game. Although you aren't looking at bad weather, at least you're in Jacksonville. But yeah, it's not a good game. We got the bold take part, Cody. Cody, what do you got? What do you got? I just want to say I, this isn't a bold take, but the Panthers are winning that football game. Yeah, I mean that's, that that chaos make at the, the top of the draft, baby. We're gonna have a new AFC South leader after this week. I mean that's that's what that avenue is gonna be. Panthers win, and yeah. whether the Colts win or not, Texans whatever, it's gonna be a new. It's got to something's got to get yucky for that week 18 matchup, right? I think Talk I, I about think a I might team have to limping it. into the postseason. The, the, think- the Jaguars are just a wounded animal crawling <laughs> to the end of the season. I mean, rough. I think I'm gonna have to put some money on that game. Uh, Panthers are plus four right now. You get four get, get points get with Panthers, yeah. yeah, baby. Get some juice, get some juice. Yeah. All right, it's bold take section or bold take time for week 17 championship boldness. Nothing better, Cody. What is your bold take for week 17? Well, my bold take is that uh, my little brother Tiger that's in the chat wins no championships this week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, he's, in your face, T. In your face. I'm in Minnesota. I'm in Minnesota, and I've been hanging out with him. And he's just like, I gotta make these trades, man. I've been sending trades left and right. I try to trade Maddie. I got trade you. I got trade Garrett. I gotta get these deals done. I gotta win the championships. And I'm like, son, no. All right, but the real bold take. Yeah, he's in four championships. Is it his line? So this is the line. Not, not to get off onto a set t- t- tag or anything, uh, but he he looks at me there day and he goes, uh, "You know what the best part about the playoffs is? Is I'm in ten leagues, but uh, I only have to set four lineups in the playoffs." I'm like, "That that that means you're not doing well. If you could set all ten, that means you'd be doing well, right? If you could send yeah. continue, yeah, you didn't well, put the math the together. Ball, play some best ball. There you go. Uh, bold takes for week 17. We're finally going to see a Marvin Mims breakout. No Russell Wilson. We're going to see Jarrett Stidham. Marvin Mims is going to be a breakout candidate uh, at the running back position. I brought up Josh Oliver, so I guess that could be kind of sensed as a bold take at the tight end position. At the quarterback position, we're going to get another game out of Baker Mayfield. Baker, I saw the question in the chat a minute ago, Baker or Stroud. I thought I might as well just bring it right back up. Baker Mayfield is going to be a top five quarterback this week at the end of the week against New Orleans. They're trying to win this they were trying to win this division, and this is the game to do it. The Saints are the only competition for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think the Saints, or I mean, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to win this game, and it's going to be on the back of Baker Mayfield. Uh, and then finally, at the running back position, I'll give you one strong one here. The guy we've been talking about all year, you guy you never should have sold. This isn't really that hot of a take, but I'm just going to stay with it here. The guy you never should have sold, the guy you should have stayed pat with all season, Jameer Gibbs, running back one on the week, and it's only going to further grow him into being a top three finisher on the season. Did you just – did he just bold swipe you? <laughs> did I really? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you get for being a Montgomery fan, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, he was. It was looking pretty good before Montgomery got hurt. But anyway, I mean, you guys have been. This is insane. I give. I say, give me your bold take. Cody rattles off eighty-five. Give me your best <laughs> yeah. match. Yeah. Seth rattles off the entire slate. And he waited until the last. He waited until the last one too he gave me all this hope like oh I'm it's gonna, not that bold you have such well, a not only did he take your bold take yeah. he said your bold take was shite anyway yeah so yeah. jameer gibbs uh running back number one overall i think it's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be a good chance that that happens so oh. double like if you want to view it as a positive i mean it's a double like from cody and myself here's the real bold take gentlemen that's jameer gibbs finishing as number one running back yeah very possible. It's not super bold. Uh, I think at the Minnesota, we're going to Minnesota Green Bay. I think Tucker Craft's going to finish as a top five tight end this week. If you nice. if you need a desperation shot at tight end, just look at what Tucker Craft has done over the last four or five weeks. I mean, it's like tight end 11 in week 12, tight end 19, tight end 12, tight end six against Tampa Bay uh, where he caught a touchdown on six targets, but he's getting targeted like six targets, four targets, six targets, six targets. So if he catches it, it very possible, he catches a couple touchdowns in this game. So he's definitely a break glass in case of emergency tight end. I stole that phrase from Theo Greminger. So uh shout out to Theo for that. And his Big sleeper column. But I, I like Tucker craft as an emergency tight end play this week. If you need it, I'm going to make mine short, sweet and to the point. Jared Stidham has more fantasy points than Josh Allen in the fantasy championship. That is my bold take. Wow. You, you know, you, you messed up, man. You literally had the opportunity to triple down right there with Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, missed an opportunity to what, get the, the, get the terrible thirds. Two positives make a negative, right? Oh, terrible third. Sloppy seconds, terrible. We need to think of a better, nastier name. Yeah, like what it would be that? Because sloppy uh, seconds is disgusting. Yeah. Everyone knows what that means. Turdy what thirds. Turdy thirds. I don't know. Turdy <laughs> thirds. Terrible thirds. Turdy thirds. Turdy thirds. Turdy thirds. Give us your uh, – I don't know. We, we might get demonetized if they start – giving us suggestions in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's answer a few questions in the chat. Then we're going to wrap up with a quick bargain bin roundup. Uh, we're going to go with Geist here, Deontay or Thielen, Cody. Deontay Johnson or Thielen. It's interesting. I, I like where Thielen's sitting right now, but uh, I don't like actually either of these matchups this week. I'm just going to ride with Thielen. Seth, Bears or Ravens defense? Ooh, no I bias. like the I like the Bears defense. I do. I Adam Thielen or Tua, uh, you know, Devon A. Chain or Bijan. I mean, that's probably a bad example, but you get what I'm saying. I, I again, <laughs> again, I this Bears defense has been playing really well, and I just like the way they match up against a uh, Falcons team that likes to run with Tyler Algier instead of Bijan. So Man, I, I like right. that for the Bears defense. Cody London or Jamar Chase. Chase. I, yeah, it's not even close for me. Not even close. Yep. Death pick one, DJ Shark, Josh Down, uh, Jameson Williams, or Cedric Wilson? Eey, Ooh, this is the question of all questions. Yeah, this is not great. Uh, these are all desperation plays, I, I think. Um, gosh. I'm going to pick Williams, which has the most upside. I, I think yeah. they, he has a deep bomb potential in him, right? That's that's the it, way it, I would go. I think DJ Charles. Under. Yeah, we just talked DJ, about uh, all these other kind of matchups. This mm -hmm. is the go with the speedster, the big playability guy, in, in the highest over under. That's that's kind of the, the principle here. Cody, you're gonna start two of these guys: Ty Chandler, Jonathan Taylor, Zamir White, or Joe Mixon. This is a pretty good list of players. Uh, let me scroll up here. For sure, starting Jonathan Taylor. And then number two is going to be Zamir White. Number three is going to be Ty Chandler. And then fourth is Mixon. So you're going to bench Mixon. You're going to bench uh, Chandler. So you're going to play Zamir and Taylor. Yep, there you go. Deontay or JSN? Another Deontay question for you, Seth. Oh, wow. That is pretty close. Uh, I'd probably go with the upside in JSN. And we know who the, we know that there's more of a reliable quarterback there, too. Um, 
JSN has put in, put on some. I mean, there's more upside with JSN, I think. So I'll go JSN. Those are, that's painful one that you got to sit there and watch that one on Sunday because that's going to be a shitty game. And then Daggers is going to be like, man, I got to play Deontay or JSN. And if it goes the bad way, you have to sit there and go through the pain of watching that guy do good and your guy sucking. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a coin it's a coin flip I think, but I hey, just lean JSN. I don't have a strong opinion either way. Cody, last one. Oh, this is from Josh. So a little backstory. Josh Moore, our guy, Josh Moore, asked me if he should bench Flacco. I said yes. He didn't listen because he is the man, the myth, the legend. Josh Moore, good for you. Last question, Cody Ingram or Eckler? Yuck. Hmm. Eckler because there's no Trevor Lawrence. That's right. Yep. There it is. That's the right answer. All right. Now let's move on to Zbargon Bean. One quarterback, one running back, one wide receiver, one tight end. These guys are all 50% less rostered throughout platforms. You could pick whatever platform. You could ha- kind of chop it up, if you will, or how you please. Seth, who is your quarterback in the bargain bin in week 17? Championship bargain bin, boys and girls. Yeah, we're going CJ Beathard. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we're <laughs> I, I think there's a couple. I, I, I mentioned one earlier, Jacoby Brissett. I think he's been really, really good this year, and I think – there's going to be some garbage time in that game for him to really operate and, you know, put up a, a touchdown or two late. I also like uh, Gardner Minshew this to bounce back this week with Michael Pittman. If you look at his performance with and without Michael Pittman, it's night and day. So getting Michael Pittman back makes all the difference for a team that I think is going to be drunk heading into week 17. Uh, they'll, they'll play tough and hard. Like Antonio Pierce is going to have them ready to go, but, I think their defense is is, is going to give up some points this week indoors. So I, I like Gardner Minshew and Jacoby Brissett in desperation mode as I am. Uh, th- those are like two options that I'm tr- trying to choose be- between currently in a championship game. So, so rules, boys, one. One player in the bargain bin. Oh, okay. All right. Then we're going to start stealing each other's bargain bin players and yeah. then repeating. Mm. All right. That's my That's- bad. <laughs> My bargain bin is um I'm gonna roll out. I'm I'm cool with playing Kyler Murray. I like CJ Stroud. I like I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know no, no, no. My bargain bin, I already said him. It's Jaron Hall. I'm going I'm going Jaron Hall. Jaron Hall is my he's top 15 this week. Jaron Hall's the guy. Um I think he's in a game that's gonna end up being a 33 30 type of a finish. Whether they win or lose, whatever happens, I think he's gonna end up throwing for 250 plus. You probably rush for 40, 50 plus, uh, hopefully rushing for a touchdown. And he'll be able to get the ball to Jefferson, and and he's going to make this offense work on Sunday night. Real quick follow up from Facebook. Shout out Roy. So Seth, are you taking Minshew over Goff? No, 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 no. I I'll play Neg- Goff. Negative. That, uh, I I love the shootout potential indoors. I think it's just set up for a a high scoring game in the you know thirty, yeah you know, thirty four thirty one in the thirties. I think it's going to get up there. We all plan for week 17 correlation back in August. Don't bail it out now. It's finally set up for exactly what we're looking for. It didn't fall apart like the Chiefs and Bengals matchup. So stick with your Lions and your Cowboys. My bargain bin quarterback is Tyrod Taylor. Cody kind of mentioned it briefly earlier that the Rams might put up a ton of points. So there might be catch up to be uh, had uh, for the New York Giants. Uh, the Rams have given up the fifth most fantasy points to quarterbacks this season, but they've actually been even more advantageous over their last three games. They've given up the most fantasy points to quarterbacks over their last three, but they're also really good at stopping the run. The Rams are good at stifling opposing running backs, which creates a particular pass funnel opportunity. Uh, And I think that that could happen. And last week we did see um, Tyrod Taylor score over double digit points in relief coming in for Tommy Cutlets, uh, and he was QB7 back in week seven. So I'm going to go with Ty God Taylor as my bargain bin QB in week 17 championship week. So now let's move on. Cody, what is your bargain bin running back for week 17? Running back week six, we had week seven. Geez, I almost said week 16. Week 17. This is going to be a familiar name. People are going to hate it because everybody hates it because everyone has hated it all season long. But we did see – a little bit more come to fruition this year. I think both the boys know exactly the direction I'm going to go right here. It's a running back in Chicago by the name of Roshan Johnson. 67 yeah! weeks, 
14 rush attempts, 10 targets. 14 rush attempts, 10 targets the last two weeks. Finished running back 23, running back 34. Roshan Johnson, again, another one of these guys. We need to figure out what he is going into the playoffs. And also, best players play when you need to win games. And guess what? The Chicago Bears need to win games. They're trying to win games. I think Justin Fields wants to win game because he wants chaos. I want chaos, and I want the Bears to make the playoffs to create more chaos. So Roshan Johnson, week 17. The Bears have this weird uh, you know, connection of playing for their jobs from top to bottom, from the coach to the quarterback to the, the, the role players. They're all playing for the team to stick together going forward, and they're also still kind of fighting for a playoff spot. We talked about it on the hurdle. I think it was on Tuesday, right, Cody, that they got a shot. Yep. They got a shot to to make the playoffs. So Roshan Johnson, Roshan Johnson in Week 17, finally coming through for your fantasy championships. Seth? Who should teams turn to if they are desperate for the running back position? I think I think Justice Hill is a pretty good option in that Miami uh, Baltimore game. We know that Baltimore wants to run the ball, um, and and ever since uh, you know the Keaton Mitchell went down, Justice Hill is that player that can fill that Keaton Mitchell hole. He was targeted three times last last week. He got ten carries, sixty two percent snap share. So they're leaning more toward Justice Hill. As, as that style of play that they like than they are toward Gus Edwards. Now, Gus Edwards is probably going to vulture some touchdowns if they get inside the five, but there's a real opportunity for Justice Hill to break off a big run. We know he's got uh, some juice to his game. So I, I, I think Justice Hill, if you're desperate, I think he's more than a fine play because uh, he's going to get probably at least 10 to 12, maybe 15 opportunities, targets and rushing. So uh, I think you got some guaranteed volume there. Justice Hill, Roshan Johnson, and I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit here, boys. Samir White. He's still only rostered in about 42% of Super Leagues, only 16% of ESPN. So if you're in ESPN redraft league, go pick up Samir White right now. Indianapolis Colts have given up the second most rushing touchdowns to running backs this year, uh, and they've been the second most advantageous matchup over the last three against running backs. We like that. We also like that Samir White has been damn good for this football club over the last two weeks, scoring over 15 fantasy points in each of his last two contests. So you may not think he's available. Go check your waiver wire. Cause if Zamir white is there, you need to scoop him up. Whether you have, whether you're going to start him or not, because you don't want your opponent starting him because he has a chance to have a pretty good game in a matchup. That we've talked about quite often throughout the show. So go get Zamir white. Now let's answer a few questions in the chat before we move on to wide receiver. Brian's asking Browning or Stroud, Cody. Stroud. Stroud. You guys are awesome. Thanks, Jess, for the for the love. Here we go. Uh Raiders, Chiefs, or Bills defense, Seth. Oh, wow. Um, defense question. So the Chiefs playing the Bengals. What are the options here? Bills defense. Bills have the Patriots. That's all you need to know. Oh, Play the Bills right. defense against that's the right. freaking hapless that's in right. the revenge game. Because remember, somehow, some way, Mac Jones and the Patriots beat the Bills. They are going up to Buffalo now, and the Bills are going to look to kick the living dog shit out of the path. So you're going to go Bills defense. But I'm going to hit you another one, Seth. Nico Collins or Chris Olave? Oh, wow. If CJ Stroud is back. I mean, this these are two great options here. Um, Hammer it. If CJ Stroud is back against the against the Titans, I like I like Nico Collins there. To be honest, like big, that might be big, that might be Nico. bold. Um, no, that, that, might, that might be bold. I don't know, but that that that's what I would go. Big, don't you? Well, well, hold on. Like, is wouldn't Chris Olave be the safer option out of those two? He has Probably. a great matchup. He does yeah. have a good matchup. So I would um, say if you're favored to win. Like if you're a big underdog, it's Nico for sure. But if you're favored to win, maybe Chris Olave guarantees you some points. But I would, I would, out of the two, if I have to make a decision, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna roll the dice and go Nico. Cody, yeah. I got a two parter for you: Goff or Stroud, and then Adams or Lockett. Goff and Adams, hundred percent. Goff, you love that shootout matchup. Stroud, of course, coming off a little bit of a banged up injury, playing a tougher Tennessee team. Uh, I like Goff head and shoulders better right now. Uh, maybe if Tank was playing, he'd probably have a little better help for Stroud at the flex position. Adams, we talked about him earlier. We like Lockett, but Lockett's in a tough game, tough situation, tough predicament against the Steelers. Give me Adams in that championship glory. Good luck. Tyler Lockett, let's see if he's on a new team in 2024 as they make more targets available for JSN. 
DJ Moore, Zamir White, or Zay Flowers, Seth? Oh, boy. Um, gosh, I can't believe. Uh, I, I might. I think Zay Flowers. I, I like that. Um, Zamir White has, has a guaranteed floor for you. Um, but out of those three, I think as much as I like DJ Moore, I think Zay Flowers for me. Is that crazy? Yeah, no, it's not crazy. I get it. Cody, Zay Flowers, or Calvin Ridley. So let's talk a little bit of Zay Way. I hate Calvin Ridley, dude. He's one of, I, I don't hate him, but it's just, it's so irritating for a guy like him and Cooper. Him and Cooper. We talked about Cooper before the volatility that he brings to the table where it's like, you get that big 55 pointer, and guess what? I ain't playing next week. And you knew it was coming before it even happened. Uh, Calvin Ridley has two touchdowns last week, but now you have no Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I'm going to lean Zay here, but I'm going to do it with hesitance because I, It'd be the perfect situation for Kelvin to double down, go two touchdowns, help Jacksonville win this game. But let's go Zay Flowers. Friends, we answered this a few minutes ago, but it's definitely Chase. You're going to go Chase, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. All right, let's move on to wide receivers. Seth, who is your wide receiver here in the bargain bin? Well, the three wide receivers. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> another joke. Son of a bitch. Another joke. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go Demarcus Robinson. Uh, if you need him, I, I just picked him up in a league, so I know he's available. But if you look at what Demarcus Robinson has done recently in this Rams offense, that's really, really hot. It, it kind of goes against convention because you have obviously Cooper Cup and um, Puka Nakua in that offense. But if you look at what he's been able to do, it's really impressive. So if you need an emergency wide receiver, I think he's a fine play against the Giants. We talked about that matchup a little bit earlier. So, Demarcus Robinson, for me. Cody, who is your bargain? Like one? I'm gonna. I, I got a couple here, um, but I'm only gonna give you one. Uh, his name's Marvin Mims. Marvin Mims out in Denver, new quarterback. Jared Stidham coming in, gonna get, bring you some competency at the quarterback position over Russell Wilson. And I think he's gonna do something that Russell Wilson hasn't been able to do, and that's push the ball to Marvin Mims. Four targets last week, three catchable, 61 air yards. He was finished as wide receiver 39. If you go all the way back, he hasn't had a game with that many air yards, 61 since week three, had 127 in week three, 91 in week two. I think he's going to double down similar to that week two, three situation. He's going to go 90, 100 air yards, more opportunities for Marvin Mims. And, and you're sitting here in these situations asking, should I start Demarcus Robinson? Should I should I start KJ Osborne? Should I start you know uh, Darius Slayton? Start Marvin Mims, and, and I like Demarcus Robinson as well. But start Marvin Mims. It's uh, I I think that the upside in this offense, they need to know who he is as well because Corlin Sutton and Jerry Judy are likely uh, out of the building at the end of the season, as is probably Russ. So Marvin Mims again. Remember the first draft pick Sean Payton ever had in Denver, as was Brandon Cooks, the first ever draft pick he had in New Orleans. He wants this guy to be successful. He wants this guy to be good. He wants him to be dynamic, and he will do that in Week 17 against the Chargers. So we got a follow up question for both of you. So Cody, the mask is Demarcus Robinson, London, or Mims. I'm going to add Mims here for you. Uh, London. London over the three. And yeah. Seth, are you going Robinson over London? Uh, I'm probably going with London there, as much as I don't like it. But yeah, I think that's the I'm right going Demarcus answer. Robinson, boys. Jalen Johnson's been the best cornerback in football all year long. London's been he disappears too much. I'm not going London here. Uh, but I understand why you play him. My bargain bin player is someone that Cody just mentioned briefly. So actually we talked about the top of the show. Shout out Tiger Darius Slayton. I'm going with the giant stack here. Holy shit. What the hell am I doing? Uh, but I already talked about the pass funneling that this defense creates. So uh, uh, that's a major reason. And just like QB, LA has been putrid against uh, wide receivers over their last three games, giving up a ton of fantasy points. And Darius Slayton, believe it or not, has 10-plus fantasy points in three of the last five Giants football games, and that includes two top 20 finishes. He doesn't need volume, which is what I usually try to harp on here in the bargain bin because it's tough to depend on, on someone who's not really rostered, not really relied upon to now get 10 targets. Slayton doesn't need it. He only needs three to five to you know, targets and catches one big blow up uh, play. We saw that last week. So uh, that's my bargain bin play. But I will say this Marvin Mims, you've swayed me, Cody. If he's available, I want me some Marvin Mims uh, here in this week if I can help it. Uh, but now let's move on to the most important position in the bargain bin the tight end position. Cody, who is your bargain bin option at 
We're at tight end. We've seen the focus all year with TJ Hawkinson in Minnesota. He's finished tier one, tight end three, one, four, 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 one, three. He's been top 10 on a weekly basis uh, in this Minnesota offense, despite there being one, two, three, four quarterbacks at play. Josh Oliver's going to relay into this one. He had 13 routes in week one, hasn't crested 10, only three times since he hit 10 uh, over the course of the remainder of the season. But he has gotten those targets over the last five games, four, zero, one, two, and two. He's finished as a top 36, 38. He even finished as tight end three back in week 11, which is four targets. I think Josh Oliver's a guy that's going to come in here. He's going to pull in six to eight targets, maybe nine, maybe 10 if he gets lucky. Maybe if there's a couple inactives that come out late on Sunday. Josh Oliver's my favorite play this week, I think, of all four of these positions. Mm, big time move for Josh Oliver. And would you recommend this, Cody? I did this in a league. Uh, I just picked him up so that my opponent could have picked him up. I have, uh, I have a good player. I'm, I'm not going to use him, but I did just pick him up. Now, give me a quick – this is a kind of spurring this on you, so you might not have uh, the answer exactly flushed out. So if you need a minute, let me know. But for my own selfish sake, where would, would he mix in your flex type of spot? Like which running backs and receivers are you benching in favor of Josh Oliver? Because now that you mention it, I might want to get him in this lineup. Let me look here quick. Give, let yeah, Seth give his time. answer. Let, let, me, let me look through here at the, quick, the flex position. Perfect. Seth, who is your bargain bin tight end as Cody uh, gives me some advice because this is my show. I can do whatever the hell I want. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I already, I don't know if this, uh, this is going to be cheating probably, uh, but I already gave you Tucker craft. So there's one, uh, two would be Chiggy Aconquo. Uh, if you're in desperate need, he was the number two <clears throat> tight end in fantasy points last week against Seattle. Uh, you have Will Levis coming back. But if you go back further than that, there were signs of life for Chica Conquo, uh, starting in week 12 against Carolina. He was the tight end 13. He's the tight end nine in, in Indianapolis. He's been, he was been averaging like eight, nine fantasy points per game. And then he had the big blow up week in week 16. So he's getting five, five targets, six targets, six targets, and then six targets again last week. So he's been getting targeted. And he's probably sitting out there on your bench. So if you if you're in desperate need of a tight end, I think he's a fine option against Houston. That's a pretty good matchup uh, for a, for a tight end. So I like that. And I will uh, go ahead and just give my tight end real quick, and then we'll get Cody's answer for my personal fantasy team. Uh, but my tight end uh, in the bargain bin is Juwan Johnson. Um, yep. The Buccaneers have been terrible. Their secondary is awful. They gave up a ton of fantasy points to quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight ends. Over their last three games, they've given up the third most fantasy points on a points-per-game basis. And Juwan Johnson's been pretty effective over the last two. He scored over 10 points in each of the last two Saints contests. So if you need him, he's out there. I think he's only rostered in about 20% of ESPN leagues. I'm going with Juwan Johnson, baby. So Juwan Johnson, Tucker Kraft, and Josh Oliver. But now the question we've all been waiting for, Cody, where does Josh Oliver fall in your flex ranks? Well, first off, at tight end, as like I said, I have him at 11, so it's right below Chig and Cole Komet. Uh, and, I, and I honestly feel like I want to move him ahead of both of those guys. But at the wide receiver running back position, guys that I would start Oliver over, I'd start Oliver over Gabe Davis, start him over Jaden Reed, Josh Downs, Jacoby Myers, uh, Noah Brown, Drake London, the aforementioned. Uh, Deontay Johnson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. Running back, I'd start him over Isaiah Pacheco, dealing with a concussion right now, coming back. Uh, decent match against the Bengals. I'd start him over uh, James Conner, start him over Jalen Warren. I'd start him over Najee Harris, Javante Williams. Would not start him over Ty Chandler. Wouldn't start him over Mixon or Swift. And I probably would not start him over Zay or Pickens or Thielen. Okay, so now that is going to wrap up the bargain bin. Let's just answer just a couple of questions, and then I'll let you boys get on out of here, watch some college football tonight, and get ready for that blitz of a matchup on Sunday or Saturday Night Football. Isaiah Likely or Zay Flowers? Uh, I pro I'd probably go. I probably go Flowers there, but it's close. Yep, yep. I got I got Likely below uh, Oliver, so I'm going Flowers. All right, PPR flex, Mostert, Montgomery, Jay Reed, or Laporta, Cody? Ooh, you only get one guy here. Um, that Mostert, the Mostert thing scares me off a little bit. Um, 
the injury report this week, questionable still. DNP, DNP had limited on Friday. Scares me off a little bit. If uh, if old Jay Glazer comes out and says he's 100% on uh, Saturday, on Sunday morning, I might lean Mostert there. But Laporta plays tonight, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Give me Laporta, bro. Give me Laporta. Give me Laporta, too. Screw this. Screw this. So we've talked a lot of Zay. We've talked a lot of Jaden Reed. Now let's pick of the two, Seth. Flowers or Jaden Reed? I think it's still Zay Flowers. Jaden Reed's coming back from injury. I know it's a prime matchup. I like Jaden Reed a lot. Uh, I, I like him a lot this week, but I like I like Flowers a little bit better. Yep. Okay. And last question before we get out of here. Ridley, D-Hop, or Chris Godwin, Cody? Well, it's not Ridley. Uh, and Hopkins is going to get Levis, should get Levis this week. And the other one on here is what Godwin Godwin versus the Saints at home. Yeah, I'm gonna lean, I'm gonna lean Hopkins here. Give me Hopkins oh. against uh Houston in Houston. Let's do it. Oh. All right, boys, thank you so much for rocking me on the championship bonanza, answering the five most important questions of the week, and diving deep into the bargain bin to give the planners all of the information that they need to dominate and get the chips with the dip, baby. But now the floor is yours. Seth, I'll start with you. Let everybody know where they can find you, where they can get all your content, everything they need to know about Sethy D. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Seth underscore D-I-E-W-O-L-D. You could follow me or subscribe to my YouTube channel, same first and last name. And all my work you can check out. Um, I've been writing a weekly Dynasty article at playerprofiler.com, so you can check all of that out there. And go ahead and check out all of the work of our talented writers, including Maddie Kiwoom, um, at playerprofiler.com slash articles. Cody, floor is yours. Tell the people where they can find you if they don't, but they probably already know, but we're going to say it anyway. First off, I did want to say just a second ago, I brought up that Hopkins thing. Hopkins is playing in Houston for the first time in his career as an opponent, by the way, he's played them twice, Ooh, but it's really, it's been on the road. Yeah. So he's going to be back in Houston for the first time in his career as an opposing team, but you can find all my stuff over at roster watch. You can find me at patreon.com forward slash executives. I will be on Sirius XM channel 87 here in about an hour with Alex Dunlap. Your boy, uh, you can find me on X at Cody Carpentier uh, and all my other stuff is going to be over at rosterwatch.com. I'm going to be find my mock drafts. You're going to find my rookie write-ups, my rookie spotlights. And then Alex and I are on the roster watch uh, YouTube channel as well, doing uh, roster watch rookie profiles for all the senior bowl guys uh, on the, on a weekly basis right now. So that's where everything is at. And you can obviously find me on X at Matty Kiwoom. All my stuff at Player Profiler is at the website, playerprofile.com. Make sure you're subscribed to the Player Profiler YouTube channel. Like this video. Leave a comment. If you have a lineup question, whatever, leave it in there. We will check it out and get back to you. And then also go over to the Executives of Fantasy Football YouTube channel. Throw another subscribe over to that. Cody and I have the hurdle Tuesdays. And then the three of us are on every single Wednesday. Cody, Seth, and myself on the hurdle. So go check that out. And the Sunday watch alongs they're about to turn into the playoff watch alongs because you know holiday season can't really get to it but we will get back to it in the playoffs and then patreon.com forward slash executives war score cuck score cody's rankings we can get the mock drafts there everything in the you get to the discord that's where you want to be over at patreon.com forward slash the executives but that's cody that's at i'm at a key room. keep game planning my friends and get those fantasy championships. Peace. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for tuning in. It's important to me that all of our media be free. This is only possible because of you allowing a true independent sports media enterprise to thrive unlike any other in the business. So please subscribe to the All-In Package to continue to make all this possible to ensure that all of our stats, information, data, content is available to you, especially you the people that get the site and get the show.